I'm going to cut out any other excesses. Good day, everyone. Thank you for coming physically. It's, um, I appreciate that. And I will make sure I, I make your time counts. Hopefully we will try to exchange and try to learn from each other today. So this, the topic we are going to be talking about today, it is one of the most important topics that we will be building upon. Can we just close the door? It's one of the most important topics that we will be building upon as we go through the course. As we go through the course. So I will urge us to pay a keen attention. I want us to pay a keen attention to every uh, explanatory, you know, processes we are going to go through. Everything that has to do with Python, by, I mean, by extension, machine learning is built with you and with us understanding this concept that I'm going to be talking about today. So I will try my best as much as possible to make visual presentation of what I'm talking about. I believe both mathematics and computer science, they are both abstract concepts. Most of the time, if I'm saying one plus one is two, it's just in my mind. I can't see one plus one is two. But one of the ways to learn this type of abstract concept is to picture it, make it physical, like geometric representation. It's more reinforced. It's the type of way of learning that is more strong than me just telling you and you just writing it or memorizing it theoretically. So I will be explaining it in a very detailed approach and graphical representation of what variable is. Now, variable, there are containers that keep something. It's like a bag that you keep something in it. By extension, variable does not keep one more than one thing. I'm still going to explain it in deeper, in deep. We are just giving a kind of introduction to what we are going to see. Then also, we will be talking about data types. In programming, in machine learning, we are dealing with data. It is very important for us to know the type of data we are dealing with so that we'll be able to know how to deal with them. Do we, are we dealing with number, numerical data? Are we dealing with character? Are we dealing with string? And so on and so forth. So we will try and, you know, understand all these concepts in the day. And also, we're going to be talking about control statements. In programming, programming seems like something that is intelligent. It is intelligent because we are giving it some ability to make decision. And that is what control statement does in programming. In Python, we give Computer language or computer ability to make a decision when it encounters a particular constraint. For instance, I can say that if I did mathematics in school, then I can go ahead and do machine learning in my master's or PhD. Or if you're a computer graduate, you can go ahead. That's if statement. You can say, I'm making a statement. You don't even know that I'm giving condition. That is the way you talk to computer. If this condition is correct, then do this action. And that is the power that makes computer to make some decisions like your phone, like your website, they make decisions because of this control statement. So we're going to dive into it and try to break it down. Then, say, let me just hide this. A programming generally is what we call data structure. Data structure is an advanced, you know, variable. Variable stores one item at a time. But data structure, they can store multiple items at a time. It's, like, it's more or less like when you want to store more than one number in a particular bag, how do you store it? You don't use variable to store that kind of thing. You store it with something like data structure because it can take more than two TG items in a storage at a time. So for you to have live data set that you want to pre-process, for instance, if you are dealing with data science, how do you store this data set in data? I mean, in data structure, for instance, while you present it, what type of data structure do you use? And so on and so forth. So we're going to dive into that and let us know the most popular data structure that is you know, that Python used for its um, task. So let's now start with the first one that I intend to explain to us. I said, variable. Variable, let me just, I will not read, I will just be paraphrasing it. Variable in programming, they act like container. As you can see in this picture, I'm giving a description of what a variable is. It's like when you have a boss. And you have to store item in the bus, as I've said earlier on. Variable does not take more than one item at a time. 
So in each of these verses, I cannot put more than one thing in it. You can see the verse that is tag. It, it, it has a name. So one thing you have to know about variable is that it must have a name. The first variable is greeting. The first boss is tag greeting. That is the name of the boss. And in that greeting, we have something stored into it. This type of data we can call it string, but we'll talk about that later. But for in each of the buses, it, we call each of the buses a variable. And each of the buses has a name you call it. The second word is called animal. And the third word is called age. And you can see their respective data that is stored in them. And that thing you will notice about variable is that the type of name you give that variable is we normally name it in such a way that to signify what we want to store in it. For instance, if I'm storing A, I know that I'm storing number. If I'm storing animal, we, an example of animal, for instance. So when programmer, when we give name to variable, we name it in such a way that it will represent what we want to store in it. Let me take us back to basic mathematics that some of us will have. I mean, a lot of us are familiar with. We know the equation in mathematics talk also. If I say S is equals to two, in my, I'm speaking in my practice terms, I'm not full guide. In this case, I have represented this variable S with a number two. It means that I have stored in variable S number two. When we say variable in English, it means that something that changes. So in this variable S, I can change what is inside it to another thing entirely. That's why we call it variable. So in mathematics term, variable is used to keep something in it. Temporarily, of course. It's not permanent. We can always change that value, and that is why we call it variable. So in programming terms also, variable are like containers that store items. One, one, two things that you have to take note of about variable is that variable can only hold one item at a time. It doesn't hold two items. That's one thing about variable. And the second thing about variable is that programmer, if they want to name variable, they choose a name that reflects what you want to store into it. Most times, we choose a name that reflects what you want to store into it. And also, um, I think that should be all for me. Let's move to the next one. So the second concept that we have to understand is data types. When we are dealing with machine learning problems, we have different type of data that we have to process. So it is binding on us to know the type of data or the different types of data that we have. It's just an extension for mathematics. We have different data or different numbers in mathematics. Numeric numbers, we have numeric numbers that can be all numbers. We have numeric numbers that can be decimal. We have complex numbers and so on and so forth. So it's the same thing that we have in programming. In programming also, we have numbers that are numeric. I mean, those that are numeric, they can be integer, they can be flows, they can be complex. complex. So as spoken some uh, technical terms, well, let me just break it down. Integer can be compared to all numbers that we have in like, mathematics. For instance, if I write value one, two, three, these are called all numbers. The meaning of all numbers in mathematics, they are numbers that doesn't have decimal parts. They are just number that are natural number, for instance. They don't have dot, three point, no, they are just natural numbers. Similarly, float, it can be likened or compared to decimal in our mathematics. If I write number 1.5, 1.7, this is called decimal in mathematics. So it is the same thing as float in programming. They are just different words, but they mean the same thing. The third the complex number, of course, let's leave that to the mathematician. Now, basically, in this three diagram, you can see that the three representation of data that talks about number, which can be integer or float or complex, they are, they are under mm. or float or complex, they are under numeric data type. So when you see this type of data, they just know that they are under the class numeric. Okay. Sorry, what are complex? Complex number. I, I intend to skip that because, you know, it's mathematics <laughs> specific. We will not actually be encountering complex in our, in our machine learning. We'll just start that okay. Way. Because we'll start that. I don't want to go into yeah. mathematics. I'm avoiding mathematics as much as possible. Unless the one that is necessary. Okay. So let's move to Boolean. Boolean, 
the uh, logic gate. I'm making an analogy with mathematics when I'm talking. Let me come down. The one end, they are like switch, switch. Yeah, those that do physics or mathematics, switch as on and off. So Bonnier are also like, I will call them numeric because at the end of the day, they evaluate to either zero or one. So mm -hmm. Bonnier are just two value data, which can be zero or one. If it is zero, we can also call it false. If it is one, we can also call it true. But let's move on. Then look at all these other type of data type. I will not specifically call them data type. The first type of data that I explained just now, I can refer to them as basic data type. Basic. When something is basic, it means that it can be used to derive more complex data type. Or in another terminology, they call it primitive data type. Are you talking about the... I'm talking about the, the integer, okay. float, <coughs> and complex. They are like basic or primitive. They use that English. They call it primitive data type. They are like, I mean, sorry. They are like foundational data type. I want to speak to you now. They are like foundational data type. So you see this other data type. I will not specifically call them data type. But the way they have just classified it now, I will just explain a bit of what they represent. Set, <clears throat> dictionary, of course, we are going to talk about dictionary, and we are going to talk about the sequence, which is list. Now, this other type of, of structure, I will call them structure, they are, they contain this basic data type in multiple forms. For instance, when it says string, for instance, if I write this letter, this is a string. Okay, this is a string. It is combination of R plus I plus D plus, uh, sorry, plus W plus A plus A. It is combination of more than one character. Character is another basic data type, but uh, I mean, Python does not, it doesn't just, you know, recognize it explicitly. This is a character, this is a character, this is a character. Combination of more than one character is called a string. So string that they have called another data type is just a, a complex form of basic data type. And the same thing will, will also be said with list. List can be used to keep more than one the primitive data type, more than one basic data type. So they are basically keeping the primitive data type more than one. Like instead of saying this one will go to another item. Then the list and the other data type that I mentioned there, they are going to be holding two series of them. But it means that basically the data type that we have in Python, they are just the primitive data type. And those other ones, they are called the reference data type. They are obtained by combining the primitive data type. I'm speaking a lot of um, technical words, but I don't want to be confused with those words. It's just that these bigger other ones, they are gotten by combining more than two of these smaller ones, sickly. Then I would like to move on. Hello, well, she went to university. You see, you need to talk about set and mapping. Just go straight to the sequence thing and the time people. So yeah. We will be talking about, we will be talking about mapping, which is dictionary in detail. But we will not be talking about set, but I will explain sets a bit. The reason why I don't want to talk about what we will not be needing is because of the constraint of our interest. Our concern of our interest is we want to learn Python that we will use for machine learning. So I'm restricting that, but I will still set. Set, as the name implies, some of us will have encountered sets in our mathematics concept. We can transfer the understanding of set from there. But when you talk about set in Python or in programming generally, set normally contain more than one items, but item in sets, the they are not repeated. I'll repeat that again. And I will link it to list. If I have a list, a list of um, letters, for instance. If I have a list of letters, if I want to put this letter in a list now, then I will have red one. I will have high. I will have D. You can see I'm putting them in inverted comma because they are character. I will have W. I will have A. I will have A. 
This one, as I've done, now you might not understand it yet because we are still going to talk about it. But since you asked about the set, I have to explain it. Now, this one is called list. Now, but set is going to be combination of. Okay, okay. This one will not tell me what I know. Okay, let's say I have we one. I have two i here. They are the same letter. I can add that in a list. But in order to represent these same characters in a set, set is like denoted with circular brackets, you know, bracket instead of square brackets. In order to represent this same character, and this one has repeated character, but in a set, the character has to be unique. I must not have repeated character or repeated item in a set. So this is going to be R. If it is two, set we just take one of them. It's the same concept in our set in mathematics. Yeah. So this one is going to be this. This one is going to be this. This one is going to be this. So this is set. This is lit. Set contains items, but they are not repeated. They must not be repeated. They are unique items. That's just what differentiates you from a list. We are going to talk about list in detail because we will be using list for a machine learning model. But we'll not be talking about sets that much because we will not be using it. So I want to keep it short to what we really need so that we will not be distracted. So the string that we talk about, we will talk about string. I have spoken about string a bit. Then we'll be using string. String is not, there's nothing than combination of characters. Yeah, combination of characters. So let me move to the next one. So now, we should just talk about. Do you mean combination of character? Is it with or without code? Of course, we have to put the codes. Okay. Uh, so I didn't specify. Code. Yeah, and you have to put the codes to make it string. You can put a single code mm -hmm. or a double code. Codes like you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. inverted comma. Is it inverted comma? Codes, this guy. Air codes. Those in one air code. One of. No, in Python, you can use either this or this. We can use the two, but there are cases that you have to use one of them at some point. But don't worry about all those details. Let's just continue. So we will be moving to the representation of some mathematics in programming from now. When we have um, our basic um, operation, our basic, um, what do you call it now? Uh, math operations, how do we represent it in programming concepts? But don't forget that now, in our foundational mathematics uh, classes, we were taught board mass. That same concept of board mass that bracket we have to come first, then multiplication we have to come next, then um, um, addition we follow, then um, MPS, subtraction we follow, and so on. That understanding is also very important when we are writing our code. But let us ask the question before you go forward. Well, the list set uh, the string, so I could see that you put a uh, bracket. I also put quotes inside for the set and list, but it's string, so you didn't put any bracket. You just put only quotes. So are you saying that the string doesn't need to put? You don't need to put any bracket in. That's why I don't want to put a lot of detail in, in for you now. I'm not, I'm not really talking about list, I mean, string in detail, although we are going to explain this one in detail in this class. And this one too, I'm not going to be talking about it in detail. String in Python or in any programming language is a combination of characters. You can even combine numbers together. But if you put them inside air code, then they will be a string. If you put them, anything you put inside air code like this, it is a string. We don't need brackets, I mean, a square bracket or a, 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 the circular brackets or the circular bracket. So we don't need that for string. Anything you put, even if I have this bracket now, and I put it inside air code like this, it has turned to a string. If I put anything inside air code, it is a string. Well, because this one is very ugly, we don't need that. So just for that string is anything that I put inside air code. It can be one air code, or double effort. So, does that clarify the? Yeah. Okay. So, let's move to the mathematics. Don't worry, I will never make mathematics to frighten you. So, then now we have the basic operation that we use in mathematics. But just to see how does Python, how does they write money? There are some of them that are missing here that I did not, you know, put here, but we might use it when we are doing some implementation. Multiplication, some of us are familiar with it. 
We have division. Divi Python has two divisions. We have the one that is called floor division. But don't worry still. Let us just stick with the one we need. So this one we divide. C is divided by four. It's going to give you four. That is one point um, two. What uh, one point five something? It's going to give us one point something. It's going to give us decimal. So when you use this type of division, it is going to return both the whole number and the decimal. Then this one is called mode. We will be using the course, this mode in one of our uh, questions today, and I will explain it better. But let me just try and explain mode a bit. My my system now. Oh. So what do we call mode? Modulus. We call it modulus in mathematics. If I divide theory divided by two, of course I will have one remainder one. Let me give another example. If I divide five divided by two, I will have two. I hate one or zero. But anyway, I will use it like that. Use use um, the one. The one. Two, two. Let me just use it like that. So look at this our basic division. What is the concept of modulus that we use in mathematics? Modulus simply is, simply means that the value you will get or the remainder you will get when you divide a number by the divisor. The one at the top is called divisor, and this one is called dividend of divisor. So, okay, this one should be dividend. This one should be divisor. Don't worry about the jargons and we'll solve for again that. Then the result we get here is called quotient. And this is the remainder. They are just giving them, giving them name. But when you talk about modulus, modulus is this value you will get, the remainder you will get after you have divided a number by a number, another number. This guy here, sorry, this answer here, this remainder here, it is the value that represents the modulus, then I can write this expression by saying that 5 mod 2. What does that mean? It means that if I divide 5 by 2, then I should get a remainder, which is in this case 1. If you write 5 mod 2, it is not the same thing as 5 divided by 2, because 5 divided by 2, you have a quotient before remainder. So by I will question if it is four mod two, so the line will be zero. zero. Obvious. So this understanding, you are going to use it to code. That's what I'm explaining it now. If I divide five by mod of two, a divisor of two, then I will write, I will have a, an answer, which is not a question, but a remainder. It is the same thing as seven divided by three, for instance. That's going to be two six. Why you again? Are you um, 25. 10 down? 5. 27 divided by 5. What's that one? 5 times 5 is 5. So I don't like 1. Okay. So this can be written in modulus form as 7 mode 5. When you see 7 mode 5, it means that after you finish dividing this number by 5, the remainder you have is what we want here. Do you understand? Yes. So I'll just leave on like that. So we might encounter this when we are solving a problem in a uh, term of our question. So this is the representation. Some of us will have used it before, but we will we'll use it in some questions so we we'll get familiar with it. Go back to this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the last one is the new set of the after is equal to new is equal to Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's not equal to. Now, uh, before, thank you for coming back. You can see in mathematics, you have one equal to sign representing equal to. If I say two is equal, I mean, x is equal to two. It means that the value here in mathematics now, the value here is equal to here. That means I'm storing two here. But if you write this type of statement in program, this one, also assign, assign actually, I want to look at that double equal to. Ah, that double equal to is doing comparison. If I say two equal to equal to four, this one is not equal to two. 
Although the equal to is coming from the mathematics equal to, which is why. But this double equal to in programming is like you are comparing is two and four the same value. You are, you are not assigning. You are assigning it one equal to. The one equal to that we have in mathematics, which is used for assignment statement, but in programming, it is not an assignment statement. The, the, the one equal to, we don't use, we use it for, um, I'm mixing it up, so what do I mean? But if you want to represent the one equal to that we have in mathematics, you have to use two equal to, to show that one value is equal to another value. It's very important not, not to mix it up. One equal to in programming, let me go to programming, leave myself. One equal to in programming, you are using it to assign. We call it assignment sign. This is an assignment statement. I am assigning, I am storing the value to in the variable s. Okay? But if I have, if I have, for instance, now, s equal to, equal to two now. Now I am not storing the value two in variable s. What I am doing is I am comparing what has been stored in this variable s with this value two. Two is a constant. Two is not a variable. Are they the same? Then if they are the same, this one will return a value one or zero. It means that if it is one, it means that it is true. If it is zero, it means that it is false, which is our Boolean value that we talked about some time ago. So this one is used for comparison. And we use this comparison whenever we want to make decision. Of course, we will encounter it when we have some questions that we are dealing with. So I would like to move on now. So I think we might be getting into some questions that we have to do. But we are not here to question question time. So control statement, that's the first thing we have to understand. I talked about control statement briefly the other time. I said it's used to, you know, give computer ability to make decision. It, it, it's used to give computer the ability to think. If this thing is correct, if this thing is correct, do a, a particular action. If, 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 if. The if is very important. But let me just read some, some, some content from, from the slide. But those statements in programming regulate events, you know, sequences that necessitate validation. This one we call validation. You have something that you want to validate before executing subsequent actions. Control comes in three forms in Python. We can have what we call the sequential control. The meaning of sequential is something that follows themselves. Something that follows themselves step by step. In programming, or yes, programming generally, uh, let me de demonstrate what, what, what Sequential is before we move to the next one. If I write, I'm writing a code I've, and I said S is two and I say Y is ten. Then I say if S is the same thing as Y, then print They are equal. You need this. They are equal. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting. Don't worry about the complexity of the code. Okay. What I just want to explain now is that if I write code like this, ah, yeah, I have complicated something here. I don't want to do this. I can just say print. I don't want to do that. Print S plus Y. Mm -hmm. Okay. Simple. Print S plus one. Now, if you look at this line of code that you have written, your interpreter that works for Python is going to start from the top by saying that this digit should be assigned to this variable. Variable is a container, is a bus that you can keep only one item at a time. So I get item two in this bus. I'm keeping item three in this bus, another bus, okay? Then I'm putting out what is inside the two different buses. If you say S plus Y, there's a value attached to them. I cannot ordinarily print S plus Y without anything attached to them. So when you get a variable, you are keeping it in a memory location in computer. 
So in that case, I am putting what is assigned as value for X, adding that with what is assigned as value or in the boss of Y. Sequential um, control or sequential structure execute program from top down. Is a, is a, is a default way that program, you know, they run in a matter without any logic, without any conditional statement. Program will just start running from the top, then it's going to be going down. That's the basic implementation of any code. Your code will not start with assigning, it will not start from here like this. No, if you start from the top, then goes down. Okay, let's move on. Another type of structure that we can use to introduce control to program is what was selection statement. Now, this selection statement is the aspect that we have to be using condition, conditional statement. For instance, if you are a boy or if you are from Nigeria, then you must be black. If you are from Nigeria, if this is the condition. At the front of that if, as a statement, you can see the, the if is a, is a reserved word. They call it a reserved word or they call it keyword in Python program or in any programming language. So if you are from Nigeria, from Nigeria, if you are from Nigeria, if you are from Nigeria, then you must be black. This that I would just call Sudoku. Don't hold. If you are from Nigeria, the most important thing is this if. This thing is the one to make decision. In this thing inside the bracket, which we call condition. This is a key word. So if this key word tests what is inside its bracket or its body, if the condition emanates to either true or false, actually it will only do this one, which is called the body. This is the body of the if statement. If the condition is true, then it's going to warn this. You are, you're going to print, you must be black. If it is false, then you will not do anything. But if I want you to do something else, if this condition is wrong, that means if that person is not from Nigeria, then I will say, else. Oh, no, I'm not writing Python, I'm just like this. So, else, that means if you are not from Nigeria, tell me, you are, then you are not from Nigeria. Then you are not a Nigerian. I have implemented a structure, another structure now that use two keywords. When you write a code, you have each statement. You have a condition for it. If the condition is true, then you're going to do the body of the statement. If the condition is false, then you can have else that will do the negation of the condition. In this steps, you will see that I did not put the condition again. I did not say if it is not from Nigeria. No, since this thing, this else is immediately under the heath. So anything that occurs under the heaths is going to be decided. So he's making the decision that should I do this or this? So you are giving the ability to think, to make decisions between two choices. And most times, you normally use this type of structure of if and else immediately if you are choosing between just two choices. Just two choices. If you have more than two choices, let's assume that I have more than two conditions that I want to compare from. I want to check if the person is from Nigeria or the person is from Ghana or the person is from Cameroon. Then I will write it like this. If you are from Nigeria, then print, you must be black. How would I say it for the rest? Okay? There is all go else if. When they want to write it in Python, but I'm still writing school there. There is all go else if. It means that if this condition at the top is not correct, then I can put else if. You have to give them a, a condition to. Else if you are from Ghana, for instance. Else if you are from Ghana. 
What should I do? You speak good English. Else, if you are from Ghana, you speak good English. I want to have another condition. Else, if which other country, please? Morocco. Else, if you are from Morocco, we need to read Morocco. Else, if you are from Morocco, you speak that area. You speak that area. From Morocco, you speak that area. You speak that area. So let's not assume that you can see that I have tested three conditions now. Three conditional statements. Which in this case, it is only one of them that have to be true. No more than one should be true. If that and this is true, if this is not true, then the computer is going to check the second one. If this is not true, then it's going to check the third one. But if any of the three is not true, you can give a default negation by writing else. None of them are African. They are, they are not African. So, I have a question regarding this, um, uh, okay. So, they are not African. Okay. Let's assume there's a black guy here and they are still for like eight years. He can speak bank here. Okay. So, how will the system know that, okay, he's, he's not a worker, but he's, he's black. And also, he can speak very good. No one is that. You are getting us the, this is just a demonstration. Okay. I am just demonstrating these concepts. I am not writing a real code. We want to contribute. We'll add up to that because Redona has not been in work for some time now, but for me, somebody like who has been in work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that there's a black who speaks. Of course, there will be some other condition we can get. If he's the one making the system, you do enough research. For example, if I'm the one making the system, I won't use that language. Okay. I'll use that to use broken national card. Okay. Then if you don't I'm using an example that you can relate to it. I'm not trying to, to make it, you know, the real implementation. No, of course, it's not the real implementation. But I'm doing, giving an example that you can, you can all relate to it and we understand. That's what I'm writing it. So the point of this, you know, illustration is that anytime you want, you want to compare more than two choices, we want to take maybe between seeds, sweets, or garden, or eba, or amala, which are my own delicacies in Nigeria. So, ah, should I take garden, or I should take beans? Then you can take condition. Ah, if I, if I take this garden, ah, I might be coughing. If you take garden, then you'll be coughing. Okay. Oh, if I take beans, ah, I might be nice in our group. If I take beans, then I might be two conditions like that. Then you have more than two, you will be using if, else, if, Else, if, else. But if you have just two, you have to have just if and else. Don't get it twisted. These are just, we will see them in code, then we will understand them. Then the third control statement that we will encounter when we are dealing with Python is repetitive or iterative, you know, structure. The meaning of repetitive is if I want to repeat a particular action in a designated number of time. For instance, now, let's say I am let's say this is me. Uh, I am running between two points. I'm running between two points. I can run from point A to point B. And I should run from point B to point A. And I want to do that five times. I am running. The action is run. So running from point A to point B, one. Point B to point A, two. Point A to point B. I'm doing that five times. Five times. <clears throat> I'm repeating a particular constant action. So if I'm repeating a particular constant action, more than once, then we have to use repetitive or loop, as we call it also. Mm. The concepts, they are just a real, and it's not much compared to if you are writing code in Java, down in very, you know, humongous. So, but repetitive statements tend to represent a repeated form of action. If I'm repeating action more than once, then I will use loop to represent it in code. But how do we deal with loop? Well, or what are those things that we used to register deal? 
उपाय कर जय श्री There are two statements, I mean, two key words, two reserved words that we used to represent blue with Python. The first one is for, and the second one is wow. We don't use more than these two in Python. We just use for and wow loop to show or to represent repeated action. Let's say, for instance, that I want my computer to print out number between one, two, three, four, five. Just print out. I can write this. Print. One, print. Two, print. Three, up to five. Well, as I'm even writing it, I'm tired. But instead of writing this statement more than one time, then you can just say, okay, I have something that can show repetition of action. And we have followed, we have world. There are, there are reasons why you have to choose between them. If you want to use for loop, the number of actions that you want to carry out must be well defined. It means that you have to have a definite number of actions. Definite, as in definite. It means that you know the number of actions. The number of actions here is five. I want to repeat the action of printing numbers five times. That is why you will use for loop. But on the other hand, if you have, okay, let me demonstrate that before going to wow loop. Let me demonstrate this for you before going to wow loop. So if I want to print number, which is a basic example, then I will say for the keyword is inside, number, this one is called loop variable. The meaning of loop variable is that it's a variable. We have had variable before. It's the one that will keep track. And don't forget that variable can only say store just one thing. It's the one that will keep track of your loop. Ah, oh, have I done the first one? Have I done the second one? Have I, variable will only hold on to one item at a time. It can't hold on to one or one. So four is the keyword. Number is the loop variable that will be increasing the number of times you are repeating it. For number in, mm, okay. Range, I will explain this. For number in range zero, for instance, I'm starting from, let's assume I'm starting from zero, okay? Or let me start from one. I want to represent this. Let me start from one up to six. Let me explain what I'm saying here. Sorry. A Python, yes, don't worry, I will explain what that means. A Python, this is called loop variable that will be increased. Now, we can say in is like normal English for number that is inside Something inside what we use range here. Range is another keyword, another reserved word that used to represent range of numbers. For instance, if I have number line and I have number between zero and five, which is one, two, three, four, this number can be called range of numbers. And that's what range does. It represents number from one lower range to higher range. Another thing is that. I put six here instead of five. Yes. In Python or in programming language generally, if you are taking a ring, you have to include an extra upper bound. You don't want to get from zero to five. I have to include it from six because the program or the computer will not. Capture the last bound is going to be one less than one less than the bound. It means that this is going to be C minus one. This is five. That's where computer works. Mm. The upper bound will be one short than the number you write there. If I write five here, that means it's going to be looping up to four. Oh. It's not going to go to five. So sorry. And is this for for loop or for number in range? For number, this is for loop. Okay, so we are still on for loop. We are still on for loop. I'm implementing, I'm trying to demonstrate for loop, how it works. For number in range 
Then I want to print my number. I want to print this thing that I have here. So six. Then I'm so I just want to print now. Instead of writing this line of code one by one, I will just write, okay, print for me anything that is stored inside this daily room. So at every time that this thing runs, if it goes the first time, the first number that will be stored inside number is one. Then it's going to print it out. Variable cannot hold more than one item. So it will, it will discard that. Then it's going to go again. From one, it's moving to two. Then it's going to store two here. Then it's going to print it out. You can write this in your, in your uh, software now. It's going to run. And so on and so forth. Until it gets to five. Then it's going to go out of the loop. Then when it gets to five, because this condition of range is going to turn, it's going to turn to force. There will not be anything after you get to the last number here, then it's just going to cut out of the loop. Cut out, break of the loop. So let's move to wow. When do you use wow to show repeated action? Okay. Wow is used if the number of time that you want to loop is not known ahead. If I don't know that ah, I want to print this thing five times, for instance. If I don't know the number of times that I want to repeat an action, then we will use while loop. Most of the time, while loop is not easy for beginners in programming to be able to use. They might not know when to use while loop. So most of the time, it's not something that you should worry yourself with. If you know your for loop, I think you should be able to deal with that in your in our um, data science and machine learning stuff. But I'll just say that anytime you want to use your wow loop, <laughs> wow loop should be used when you are not sure of how many times you want to repeat an action. I'm, I'm trying to take away for an example on the top of my head now. Okay, let's assume that I have, have I talked about list? Yes. Okay, let me, let me, let me use this example. My list. Let's say I have a variable that is called my list and I have boy. I have girl. I have boy again. Huh? This was very complex. Let's assume that, okay, I want to do this same thing with one loop. This one thing I can do. I can say I put all the numbers in a list, for instance. Or I can say I have a number that is set to five. That's as good. I have a number that is set to five because I want to, I want to print number between one and five. Or in this case, I can put it between zero and five. I can set it between one and five too. Okay. I can say, well, the number that we have here, I'm storing a value five in the number. While well, the number is greater than zero, for instance, and number, this kind of blog, I don't want to be putting use. Number is less than or equal to five, for instance. I'm complicating something here, and I don't want to start complicating. That's why I'm avoiding this time example. I'll use something else here, hand, which is another conditional statement that has to evaluate to two or four. If you have done two tables before, we are going to call home, okay. we are going to call hand, we are going to call exclusive or exclusive or those one. But basically, this one that I have used now, anytime you use hand, the two operand, the two signs <coughs> have to be yes, positive. yes. Yeah. They both have to be positive, positive. But I don't want to be deviating a lot. So you can just do while number less than five. Then, of course, mm -hmm. I want to. I, I want to. I want to start from one. Okay. That's why I included this. I don't want to. Because it's going to start from zero. If I say one number is less than five, it's going to start the number from zero, and start going all to five. But let's do that too, because we don't want to complicate things for ourselves. So one mom, the number that I have here. Before you use another thing that I have not pointed out explicitly is that. Before you make use of any variable, especially if it is wow, it has to be initialized. The way we write wow loop is different from for loop. In for loop, the variable will be used, will be initialized, I mean, with whatever you put at the front. 
But in one room, any variable that I want to use, any loop variable, has to be given a value before you use it. One norm is less than or equal to five. The reason why I'm putting or equal to five is because I want you to capture that five number. What we happen here is that for every condition, the number is going to start from zero, one, two, three, four, five. The condition is going to be two in all these numbers. Do we understand? Yep. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be two in all these numbers. So this thing is going to evaluate to two. Then you can say print norm. Then when you print norm here, it's going to start printing from zero, from one, two, three, four, five. But if I don't want it to start from zero, then I'll write that one. But that one is too long. I don't want to start giving you code that are long for me to, for you to understand. So we, we might not be using wow a lot because it is not very easy to get our head around. But if you encounter any question that requires us using wow, I will take my time to explain. So I'm right to move on now. So don't forget that we have this choke form that we use to control computer program. And the first one is sequential. We have selection. The selection can be if, if else, or else. And I've told you when you have to use any, any of those three. Then the third one is repetitive. You can repeat using for or while loop. But for our data science foundational course, I will gladly suggest that for is okay for us instead of wow, disturbing ourselves with wow. Because wow is very... So, we will be doing, doing some implementation. But the way I want to implement the question that I have here is for me to, is for us to think through it together. I'm going to write the pseudocode of, if you want to solve this question, most of the time is that we all think computer is intelligent. Actually, computer is very dumb, except the chat GPT that has some memory now because they have put some um, brain in it. But computer itself, they call it garbage in, garbage out. Computer is very stupid to the that if you give a stupid thing, you will get a stupid thing. So anytime you have problem that you want to solve as a programmer or as a data scientist or as a machine learning engineer, you won't just give computer anything. No, you really want to sit down and assess the problem and solve the problem before you give the computer to solve the problem you have already solved. So programmer, they don't depend on computer. No, they solve the problem. It is only as much as they can solve the problem that the computer will solve the problem. If a programmer does not understand the problem, no matter what you tell the computer, the computer will never be able to solve that problem for you. So what I want to use, the approach I want to use today is that we will take each of the questions and think through, okay, if I want to solve this problem, English-wise, no programming language. What will I do? What will I do? So let's start with the first one that we have there. Together before we to get there. But most importantly, there is one thing I also want to tell you. I think you just type everything. Don't worry, I think we will try to copy like that as we go. There is one thing I want to tell you about solving question in a program or mathematics or solving any kind of question. The one is that question solving takes time. It's, it's a skill that you have to learn over time. So you should not put yourself up if you are facing, you know, challenges interpreting questions. The purpose is not for you to be able to solve the question. I mean, to solve the problem on your own independently as, 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 as an initial step. But the purpose is for you to understand the logic of why should I use this for loop? Why should I use this if here? All those concepts that I've just explained, and that's what I want you to get. The why of why the code works is more important than giving the code because ChatGPT can even write code better than anybody. But why does it work? I use ChatGPT most times to understand why code works. It is not out of place to use them. But when you use them, make sure that you right. use it to understand. It's like a teacher. It's like an assistant mm. that will direct it towards. When you say that type of question in future, oh, with this same logic that I can implement it like that. So that's what I want to achieve with this. Don't be afraid. We will work through it together. And if we are stuck, we will find our same around you. So let's move on. So the first one is that, please, start me with the first question. Print, print the first 10 billion numbers. Print the first 10. It will be made by the people. Come on, scroll down. So let's see. I'm not able to write anything. 
how to react. So let's try and see if we can solve this. We are writing pseudo code, no Python. Okay, not okay. just let us try. It's only, let us my, my apologies, what is the difference? The pseudo code. Yes. And the pseudo code is a non formal way, non formal. Like I'm writing it in English, uh, print this, add this. If a programmer wants to solve problems, they will normally, they will normally write it, they are taught out in the language that they are coming, they are familiar with. Pseudocode is not, cannot be understood by computer. If I say add two plus three, add four plus five, that is pseudocode, like normal English. Okay. Yeah. So Just for you to interpret the question. So you don't have to obey any rule of for loop or while loop, anything or uh, certain variables. You are just writing it for your own understanding. When you say no Python, when does Python that's, yes. if you want to transfer that pseudocode, we will do the two now. If you want to transfer that pseudocode uh -huh. into computer language, computer does not understand pseudocode. You have to write it either in Java, Python, or any of them. So let's talk about the pseudocode. Is it going to spell it? S-P-S-E. Pseudocode. Oh, like pseudo drugs, pseudo, okay. Pseudo, like informal way of writing code. Mm -hmm. Pseudo. So we have to print, okay? We have to print the first 10 even numbers. Number one is that I have to get my even numbers, right? Yes. I have to get my even numbers. So that is called input. I should get my even numbers. Yes. As my input before I print them. But another question we have to ask is that, what are even numbers? Yeah. How do I know if the number is even or not? If you remember, I talked about modulus the other time. Mm, yes. Yeah, I said we are going to use that concept in our program. If a number is even, it's a basic math we are all used to. It means that zero. If I say that number divided by two, mm -hmm. I will get two remainder zero. If a number is equal to another one, 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4 remainder 0. But if a number is not even, 7 divided by 2, then that's going to be 3 remainder 1. So this number, that when you have the remainder to be 0, then we say that number is even. And when I explain modulus, that means I can write the result of remainder as modulus. That means I can write this statement as 8, Modulo 2. 2, yeah. Modulo 2. Oh, yeah. I'm not writing Python yet. Okay. Okay. I want you to just understand what I'm doing first. Okay. Then, modulo 2. Then my answer, if I, I think anytime we have to write it like this, my answer is normally the remainder. Okay. So, if I want to get even my even numbers in any code language, that means that I have to find the modulus of that number. So if the modulus of that number is zero, then that number is even. I, I, I will follow you. Mm -hmm. So it means that the next thing I have to do is that if I get my number, I can get number between one and ten, for instance, because they said the first ten even numbers. So if I get number between one and ten, and ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. 0 should be there too. We want to be just. But anyway, let's leave it like this. So, these are the, the numbers Sorry, that we can get. Excuse me, they said between the first 10 even numbers, not 10, like 10 even numbers. Mm. The even number should be 10. Mm. Not so on to any 10. Let's assume we have these numbers. Mm. Do you get his confusion? Yes. I don't want to Yeah, he said the, the question is false. I am not. The first 10 even numbers. Yeah, that's nobody. That's the first 10 numbers. No, no. Okay, okay, I get it now. Anytime we have this type of question, computer is interpreting the language of mathematics. So when he says first 10 even numbers, he's talking of first 10 natural number that we know in nature. The first 10 natural number are 1 to 10. The first 10 natural number as mathematicians will call them. So when you say first 10 even number, it does not mean any other number, like 20, 21, 24, no. It is the number from 1 to 10, mathematically speaking. 
I, 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 I'm that same question to my head, but I was waiting for it to finish. The first uh-huh. time you know my wait, oh yeah, wait. Let me explain it another way. Let me let me explain it another way. The first set even number we have in our natural number, there are numbers that are even from one up to the ten digits that we have. Okay. The first set even number. What are numbers? Numbers start from one, two, three. I'm using the term natural number. Yes. The natural number and our normal counting number. Yeah. So the, Sorry, but here, yeah, no. we, can, we can only get the first five. Five, five even numbers. Okay. Because, because between one and ten, the number that are even is what we want. Mm. The number that are even. According to the language of the natural numbers, one to ten, which the computer understands. Yes, mm. the yes. first ten even number. I we have, I'm saying that, okay, we want even numbers. Mm-hmm. That, okay, we want them to be between a number and a ten, you know, ten, the first ten of them. So these are all the numbers that we can possibly add. But we only want the even that are there. Okay. Okay. So between natural number one to ten. Definitely. When computer mention numbers, the first numbers, if you say the, the next 20 numbers, you are talking of number one to 20. Simply put. Okay, I understand, but I just feel like it's not you need to like a pretty good first number from one to ten or from something like that. From one to ten. First number. Like even number, sorry. But you can also call me down there. Maybe it's not, it's kind of ambiguous. It's one of the ways they write questions. You just have to get familiar, rise with, okay, this is what they need. Sometimes it will not be so explicit. Clean. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it will not be so clear. Because even if you could put it on chat me to you, it's going to be No, chat me to me. No, no, no. Chat me to me never do mistake. This is a very basic question. Don't need this. So the first thing, even numbers are numbers that are gotten within the range of one to ten. So which of them are hidden? That's the next question. Then you answer that question with this statement. By saying that, okay. The any number that I get to, any number that I get up here, take the modulus of that number. If the modulus of that number give me zero, then treat that number for me. That number is even. That's what you mean. That's what the computer understands. If, okay. If okay. the number that I will get here, when you find the modulus, there is a sign for modulus. I'm not using it. Modulus two. Sorry. Sorry. This should be modulus two. That means if you divide it by two, and your remainder is zero, that's an interpretation of modulus, then it is only that number that you should put for me. Don't put any other number that does not obey this condition. I have introduced a condition here. Yeah. A conditional statement. If yes, yes. that um your number isn't are we not supposed to store it in any place? I am not writing Python. Okay. I am writing a loose language. I like pseudo code. Yeah. I'm not yeah. writing Python, so I'm not obeying any other of Python. Pseudo-code. Just Whatever you want to solve, just write it any of Java Gaga, like a co- like a pro- programmer that is just communicating to himself. Then you know, when we want to translate it to code now, then we will translate it to code and gain the rule of, of the centers of Python. So this logic now, let us now write it in real language. So if I want to get input from user, oh, I think we wanted to say something there. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, this uh, solution will print out even numbers between one to three. Not the first thing they can know. That's what we argue. No, okay. that's, that's the... And that is, that is its own. No, I don't see it. <laughs> okay, that's what we argue. You know. If you put out the first 10 even numbers. No, even numbers between. Why not? Don't make sense. You will see that. You see that if I put it, if I put it in now, I will make sure that it will print out what you want to take. I will make sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what you are doing. And that's what he's saying. First 10 even numbers should give me 10 even numbers. 10 even numbers. That should be 1 to 20. 10. That seems to know. Yes. Okay, I get it now. I don't know what you are saying. So, when you have them, you can also, you can also increase that to 20, of course. If you increase that to 20, you should have the first 10 even numbers. Yes, that is what is going to answer this year. So, you can take of it in that way too. But that is, I'm sticking with my own way of thinking. Yeah, it's fine. Well, yeah, but you understand it like that too. I'm, I'm thinking that when you are talking about the analogy of natural numbers, and the computer will pick the natural numbers. Yeah. So, and Have you asked ChatGPT? Not yet. No, yes. Someone should just ask ChatGPT. And you bring out this one. Yeah. The, the, the question, one person should just do it. Okay. Now, one of the things I got is that we can still use this method by trying to double 
Of course, they want to print the first 10, uh, they want to just make sure that they are 10. They are not going to be 5 now. You know, it's not going to just bring the 5 one. But you can just try that. So let's continue. Oh. Just one person should check them. Between the first and the number. Yeah. 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 You are using copilots. Don't use copilots. Uh, use a HRDP. Don't need to get first on online. Just so. I just want to get first Okay, okay. Mm. It's not that we are wrong. We are not wrong. We are just interpreting question the yeah. way I want to interpret as a mathematician. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. what does charging force yeah. to twenty six? Charging force will give you an answer based on, you know, the natural interpretation of numbers in mathematics. And our interpretation might be maybe you want exactly the first 10 even numbers that we can see. That might be a essential. But basically, I'm interpreting it like a mathematician will I'm thinking of the number is referring to their natural number. So from that natural number, we start from one. Then I'm just going to get, okay, I'm assuming that the number is from one to 10. That's my own interpretation. Then it's just going to give me the first five numbers. Okay. So if I'm going to interpret it like that, there's no term. So let us now write Python code now. I hope we are not lost. We are still together. I'm yes. asking a question. I'm sorry. Because you're, you're trying to, if this question comes up in a general broad, uh, coding if it's environment, up. I, the computer recognizes the first 10 natural numbers first. So to answer this question, would it include the remaining even numbers from 11 to 20? No, I would just first? advise, I would just advise that if this question is like this, assume they are natural number that you want to interpret. Okay. Good. Just interpret as natural number, like you are counting from one. But if the question is really say that there must be 10, uh -huh. that means you are thinking of, okay, not just the first five, then you are taking the first 10. Thank you. So you can just, so that you will not be confused because this interpretation is not for me. So let's hold on. Let's now write the Python equivalent of this. I might not write it for you. You might be the one to write it yourself. So the first thing I want to do is that don't forget that I am printing numbers that are not, that are, I'm repeating an action more than once. So in this case, I'm going to be using a loop. And this loop, I'm going to use a definite loop because I want the number of time I want to go. Yeah. I'm going to take time. So you have to use more loop. Number one. Then you write it. In the syntax of Python, I'm not writing. That's what I'm telling you, writing. Then you have your for loop. You have a variable that will destroy the number of, then you have range. Don't forget that your range will start from where you want it to start. In this case, one, comma, where you want it to head. But it's not going to be 10. It's going to be what's right? The yeah. level. Then you just put. I don't know. No, no. You will, you will put this condition. It will be zero now. Zero to 11. No, I want it to start from one. Okay, okay, okay. Because you are starting from one. You are not by this condition. The symbol that represents mode in Python is if number mode, they use this percentage for mode. It's the same thing as this, two. I've told you that equal to in Python is two double equal to. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me write this one for you. I think I've not, I've not mentioned some stuff. I think my submit is still here. Okay, let's, let's write it together. So I'm using for loop. I've told you why I'm using for loop. For number, for number is a very yeah. a loop variable. It can be any other name. It does not have to be number. For number e range. Range. So I can say x. Of course. But when we name variables, we like to use names that are meaningful. So one up to eleven. Look at what I'm writing. It's, it's important you type it afterwards on your code. Look at what I'm doing here. I'm putting full code on here. Anytime you have a conditional statement or <coughs> an expression that uses any of the control structure, e, for, wow, their condition, before you write body of the condition, you have to put full colon, full colon, full colon. It's important. Mm -hmm. So this is a condition that has to be tested. Each of the numbers here is going to be stored in this variable. So the second thing is to check for the condition. That means that I have done this first line of code. I have gotten my numbers. One after the other, which is this first line of code. Then the second line of code is to check the condition. Then you say, the same next thing about Python is that there's what we call indentation. This body, because it's under this one, you have to push it forward, although your, your, your computer will do that, but it's indented. If the number here, make sure you are repeating 
the variable that you have used here. If you use S, we are going to be saying if the S, but I'm using number as the variable, then you say if the number, then you divide it, and the remainder you get is zero. Look at it. This one is also another condition, so I put full colon. Then that number is evil. Then don't, don't forget anything after this condition, the body also has to be indented. Print. Hello. I guess you're on the you're not missing two there. Oh, you should be two there. Yeah. The printing. Yeah. What are we dividing with two? Then if it is zero, then print. Don't worry, programming at the first time I did a little bit confusing, but you get a you get around it. If you write this. So print. Even number. Even number. Then you print. This one is just, you can see that I put this one inside string. Inside inverted comma. Very cool. It's just a string that will be returned like that. When you write this on your computer, it's going to say even number as I have written it. Like, it is not variable. It is a string. So if it is a string, so why are you putting bracket after the word number? Okay. This statement, this one is a function on its own. Print is a, is a keyword. It's like, it's like for, it's like if. Okay. Anytime you want to print something out, we use this statement. Okay. So, and this statement is normally how we we'll call arguments. Don't worry, don't worry. Normally have something that you have to give to it. We call it argument. It's like, uh -huh. don't worry, <laughs> Let's just continue. So, but then print, then we have to put something inside the bracket. So I'm putting, I'm using one of the simplest, you know, mm -hmm. argument that you can give print. They are complex one, formatting string. We might use it when we get there. Then this one is just going to come out number, I mean, even number. Then the, the value I want to get is the value that is stored here. Don't forget that this is a variable. It can only store one value at a time. So it's going to print out number. Then what would I get here? My output is going to be the first number that will be printed is two because it's going to start from one. Is one. If you divide one by two, will it give you zero? No, it's not going to give you zero. So it's going to, it's not going to print the number. Then the second number is going to say, okay, even number, pardon me, even number, I put dot here, then it's going to print two. Then it's going to go again, tell you, it will not do anything. The reason why it will not do anything is because I did not put else statement here. And even I put else statement, and I said, okay, print something if it is not even. I showed you this. Um, yeah, but I'm not putting it. I'm just using if. So the top one is not going to print anything out because I did not tell it to print anything, to do anything. Then you're going to go to four, then you're going to say even number again. Put this full code up, and you're going to create it like this. Once you don't change it, it's done. You can implement that on your code app now, just see it work. Then the most important thing is that you understand. Yeah, it works now. Okay. So let's continue, please. Yeah. Okay. Write a program that will increase for two numbers. Mm -hmm. This one is very complete. This is two numbers. Now, the second question, do you think we should solve it or we should skip it? Let's solve it now. We should first, yeah. We should solve it. Yeah. So I will not like the question, but I will just, I will just want to go, no. What is the goal now? What is it? It's a bit of something, huh? Yeah. But the time is that you share, you'll be fast with it, so. I can't be fast, it you will not, you will not, okay, I love fast. Okay. So, let's do the second one, Steven. I can assure you there are tougher questions ahead. Of course, we can't do that today. Thank you. When? Let's. Ah, no, it's okay, okay, okay. Most importantly, make sure you practice them at home so that you will get all of it. Now, the second question says that we want to ask two numbers from user. Then we compare the two numbers to see if they are greater, they are lesser. This one is very, quite, very simple. I'll just explain what I will do. Then, then, hopefully. So the first thing is that I need to get two numbers from user. I need to collect the data from user. So I will get the first number. Don't forget that you have to use variable. Because you are storing number, I mean, one item at a time. Number one, this one is underscore. Number one, number one, then I want to 
collect something from the user. We want to collect something from the user, a Python, we normally use this keyword, input. Please enter your first number. Your first number, please complete it. This is a prompt. In this case now, I am asking the user to give me a number. Input is a keyword. Then don't forget, another thing is that anything you use, you collect with input, it's going to be given to you as a string. It means that if I get five from user, that five is this five. Like, it's a string, it's not a number. That's one thing about input. Now, for you now to convert this thing from string or character uh, data type to number digit, then you have to do something like this. I have to do number. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that I'm we are assigning something in number, number one, still the same number one. Then I will now say input. I mean integer, sorry. Integer number number one. What did I do here? What I did here is that I take the number that has been given to me, for instance, five in air code is a stream. I want to convert it to integer. I told you what an integer is. Then you have to use this keyword integer. Then this number will now remove the vertex I mean, code and have my integer. Then you do the same thing with number two. You write this code, you, you say number two, you are not going to name it number one again. That's only question. Like, how, why are you creating five as pink? And because of, this input, because of this input, that's the way Python is to sign. If you use this input keyword, whatever you will get is a string. So we have to, have to call those strings so that we can. And because we need number. To integer. Because uh, we need integer. Okay. We need two numbers that want to compare, not strong. Yeah. Can I have that statement in one line? Of course, I don't. I know the reason why I'm not writing it in one line. You can't have a statement with that statement in one line. But because I'm, I'm just explaining to Google, I, I want to break it down. Yeah. I don't need that. That's that that was spent one in the first string. This one. Enter your figure. Enter so, your, ah, I shorten it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Enter your first number. Oh. oh. No, no. Then you put like, enter your first number. Oh, so I'm supposed to even put five or ten, something like that. No, no. It's not you. You are just writing code to request for number. If you want your code card, this statement will be seen by the user. Please enter your first number. Then the user will press maybe five. Ah, then you have to store it here. I'm a bit calculator. Yeah, right. Calculator. Okay, I get Then you store it here. But I'm not saying that that number that you store, it is not an integer. Why? Because this keyword input does not return integer. It returns string. Keyword input does not return integer. It returns string. So you have to convert it to integer. Yeah. And that is why I wrote this line of code. Then you do the same thing for the second number. I'm not going to write the second number because it's still the same thing. But make sure that you have the second number as number two. Underscore two. You write this first one, please enter your second number, then you do this in So the underscore is very key. We are... No, no, you can, you can never say number two. So uh, I, I don't need that on underscore. I'm just naming variable. You, it's not a code. No, no. It's not a code, it's just name of a variable. Okay. I'm, I can even write, because I'm having two numbers, I can say this is number one, just put one, this is number two. What is important is that when you're choosing name for your variable, you should be named that meaning, that has meaning to what you are using it for. So I want two numbers, number one, number two. Yes. Then you do the same thing. Then when you are done, what do you want to do? We want to compare. I'm not going to write the whole code because it's not of much. We want to compare. How do we compare? We are using logical statements. The logical statement is, the first one is, we are going to check if number one, Anything you have named it here, mm -hmm. if it is greater than number two. Okay. If, so if this thing is, is true, then you can say print. Number one. Look, look. I'm going to use something else here. Which might be kind of advanced. Ah. Number one. I was saying this. Number one is greater, or you can even say this. 
is greater than number two. I will explain this now. I'm coming. Number two. Everybody is going here. Yeah, everybody is going here. Yeah. Don't worry, let me explain what I have done here. This is a conditional statement. I'm checking or comparing number one and number two. So if that is true, my print now is different from the first print that I use. Yeah. I use one print. You use one print, the other time. But this print that you have F inside it, we call it formatting school. This formatting school, this is the way we write it. When you put this F at the front, then you have, but you put everything in that string, like a string. Mm -hmm. But the one, the, the one that you want to evaluate to value, the one that you don't want to be string, the one you don't want to be string, mm -hmm. that's the one you want to be an integer or any other thing that is not true. Yeah. You put it inside curly braces. <clears throat> what is going to happen here is that it's going to print the value inside number one. Let me say number one now is four. It's going to say four is greater than maybe three. This thing that you have in the Bible, calling places, they have to be something that will evaluate not to string, but to yeah. integer or any other value. Yeah. That's where there is formatting string. Mm -hmm. So the four is seen as a string. Which four? Yeah, that and that four. Where is four? Where is four? Before you, before you written. F nine, no four. It's not four. No, the four, the four, the word. Four, the four, the four. F O U R. It's not a string. Okay. It's integer now. Okay, the F string, what is it doing? The formatting string is helping us to format the way we want something to print out. Okay. We want to print out this thing. It's just like designing the printing. It's not just that I'm printing uh, uh, the first number is greater because we don't know the one that is greater. If it is, okay, you can even, okay, we can even use the basic printout. I can say, okay, if you don't, if this one is too complex, I can say, okay, print. First number. Mm -hmm. No, number one, we don't know what this is inside number one. Or we can say number one. Because it's a, it has already collected the number from the... Uh, if I write it like this, number one, it's going to be string. It's just going to put out that message. It's not going to appear like value that the story inside you. You don't understand what I'm saying. You, you don't understand. Like, what I'm trying to say is, you already said we should finish the code to number two. Right? That was, that was what you said. That means we are already getting the input from the user. Yeah, 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 you get number one and number two. So that means we already have number one and two. Yeah, anyway, this is going to take time for me to explain. But anyway, this is the way they use formatting string. If you are using formatting string, it's just to show the way you want your output to come out, mm -hmm. hey, to look nice. And anything you are putting inside this curly basic must be a value. It is not a string. But don't forget that string, everything has to be put inside mm -hmm. quotation mark. Quotation mark. Mm -hmm. So there is no time. And I think we are out of time. Um, it's 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Excuse me. Did you put the number one and in, um, in a string? Yes, they are inside a string, but it has to be inside these curly braces. Okay. What about the F? The F twin? The F is for formatting. Is it, is it inside a string? Too? No, no, no. no, no. Is, it like, is this F that made us use it like this? It's a formatting syntax. Because I'm saying something like a string at the front of that. Well, you know, so, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I think there's supposed to be a copper after the F string, right? No. I don't think so. You can check it now by implementing. But I don't think so. So, the other yeah. condition, you can also test it. You are checking greater down. You are checking less than. The most important is that we know that what we are doing here is that we are comparing two things. That's the most important thing. You don't need to implement it now. The most important thing is that we are checking, okay, if, if you ask the question from the user, if you are giving the first number as five, the second number as three, okay, this condition will hold. Then when you write another condition, you can say, else if number one is less than number two. This is another condition. Don't forget what I use here. I'm using else if. This is the same thing as else if. But in Python, we write like this. L if. The second condition. Then you will print out, oh, the first number is less than the second number. You just change this one from greater than to less than. You see it's the same print to add this. 
I'm checking the zone. Anytime you use, I've told you that when you have more than one condition you are checking, you can use if, um, if, um, if, else, if, else, if. I told you what we are talking earlier on. Else, if. Then when you are done with all the conditions you want to check, you can now put the last one as else. That means if any of them is not true, let's do this. this. Yeah. 